Okay, hi guys. We're continuing with this hardware project. I've had to go back to the original um, video camera there because that webcam sucks. Um, what's coming up in this part is how to build the XE1541 cable. Um, as I said in the previous video, this cable does work on computers up to around 2003. After that you do need an XA, which involves using transistors instead of diodes. This video gets a little technical, so forgive me if any of you get lost. Um, you really do need to have an idea about how the hardware works in this one, but um, it gives you an idea on how I transfer transferred most of my stuff in the old days onto the PC. Um, there are other ways of doing it. There is software available that will allow you to do it in Windows. Um, this is just one method that I chose. Uh, the way I built the cable, again I could have used circuit board, I didn't. I wired directly onto the plug. The next project with the XAE cable I will be using a circuit board. I will not be hardwiring transistors into the plug, it's too messy. So again those bits I'll need to order as and when time allows. But um, for now Let's just see how this one goes. Okay guys. Sorry about the bad audio. Once again I've picked up a cheap camera. First thing we're going to need to do is get yourself a piece of cable. Printer cable. Remember this is on a parallel port. And you need to strip off that much there we are, on the end of it. About, half, about an inch at the very most. And the other end, in this case I've got one off of a printer so it's got a strain relief on it. You only need five cables, that is to say four cables and the braid. Now what you're also going to need is one of these little babies, which is an old six pin DIN plug. Might still be able to get them in Radio Shack or Maplin or something like that. Um, that's what's used to plug into the 1541 serial port at the back. And for the PC end, you'll, oops, don't drop it, you'll need one of these little bud buddies, which is a parallel, not a serial, it's a parallel plug. Um, it has 25 pins and that goes into the old parallel port. If you don't have one of these on your computer it ain't going to work. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to excuse the myopia what I tend to do is fill these little buckets with solder quick if you've got something like one of these which is a welding rod elements gone on my little 11 watt now what you're also going to need to do is decide which colours you're going to use and you need to strip the end off six of those cables now, how you choose to tin the ends is up to you. I find using a mini vise always helps. What you need to do is apply a small amount of solder to the end of each cable. Just brush them lightly. That's all you need to do. You don't need much. The longer you hold the iron on there, the more the insulation melts. You don't want that. Oh. Do the braid. And this one I'm going to do all the way up. Oh, pigtail. Yep. Set. Now. Trim. You don't need that much. So, just trim a small amount off each cable. So. 
than that is something like what you should end up with. Sorry about the autofocus. Cheap camera. Now, we do exactly the same with the other end, which I won't do on camera because we're short of space. The next thing you're going to want to do is the parallel plug. Now, notice, this is a reclaimed one. It's not clean. It's the only one I could lay my hands on at short notice. Sorry about the focus. This camera really is bad. Uh, basically, you can see it on camera, there we are. These pins here, a better angle, there we are. These pins here have been joined. Alright, now they are pins 18 to 25 looking from the solder side. They have all been joined together. That will be the ground connection. The rest we just need to tin up, ready to accept some cable, which I've done already. Now, the complicated bit. The way modern motherboards are built, what we need to do is we need to put something called a diode, or in fact four diodes, into the plug in order to make it communicate properly. Now that, such as you can see on camera, is a diode. That is a 1N5819, or the equivalent is a BAT for Tango 85. They're shot key barrier diodes. And they make sure that the data on the parallel plug goes in the correct direction and you don't just end up with a jumbled mess of data. It does more than that. Now what would also be a good idea is when you've bent these to the correct lengths that you need is you might want to put some insulation over the ends like that so they don't short out inside the plug. Now I didn't actually have any proper insulation so what I've done is I've actually stripped some insulation off the end of an old disused burned out transformer that I had kicking around and you can strip off just the insulation piece. I really do need a sharp pair of these things. There we are. And you can use camera. There you are. And you can just use that to slide over the end of your of your diode legs. Right, having done that, you should end up with a completely insulated diode. Notice I've taken the insulation right up to the uh, end of the diode. I haven't left any of the of the, the metal wire exposed. Now, you can't see it very well on camera. Well, maybe you can in that shot, but you'll notice at one end there's a little silver band. That's called a cathode. You don't need to know what that means, but what you do need to know is that the cathode goes to this end of the plug, the lower end that contains pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the end that the cathode needs to be soldered to. Refer to the picture if you're a bit confused.